Good morning and welcome. Uh, today is going to be more of an update video. Um, it's too cold to do a whole lot out here. It's barely around freezing. We're supposed to get seven days of snow. So I'm going to do what I can to come up with a video that will be fun for next week. But for this week, I was going to give a quick update as to what we've been working on and what we have planned, as well as a status report on the forge. We enjoy propane tanks because they're easy to use and they seem pretty automatic when it comes to cooking food, heating workspace, or in my case, fueling furnaces. Propane is a liquid under high pressure when in our tank canisters. Tanks perform best when there's an air gap in the tank along with the liquid propane. What most people don't know is that liquid propane boils at negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit. The propane that vaporizes fills that air gap and is ready to be pushed out of the tank and burned in our stoves, furnaces, and forges. So where does the frost and ice come from? Boiling propane draws heat towards itself and steals the warmth from the steel wall of the tank. This results in the humidity from the ambient air outside to collect on the surface, just like condensation on an ice cold drink during a hot summer day. However, as the rapid heat loss in the metal occurs, this condensation on the tank freezes. What does this mean for my forge? Why does this even matter? As the tank walls freeze, the vaporization process inside the tank slows down. As vaporization inside the tank slows, the propane gas does not build up as much pressure in the air gap above the liquid propane. This may happen gradually as you use the tank over extended amounts of time or on a cold day. Ultimately, this will cause less gas pressure to be exerted out of the nozzle. This often feels the same as running out of propane. However, after the tank warms back up, if you are really not out of propane, you will find you'll have pressure in the line again. Solutions to get past this problem. 1. Use propane when it is warm outside or for less amounts of time. 2. Have a reserve tank to swap. Or 3. Place the propane tank in warm water. Never rapidly heat your tank with a torch. If you rupture the tank near an open flame, this will result in permanent damage and death. Bring the tank back to room temperature in water or sunlight. Do so gradually. So you'll see it's starting to change shape just a little bit. We've got a little bit of a dent coming in right here, but I have a feeling that's because I put the spoon here to try to pull the, the the metal off and it and it just dented where the spoon was touching but you'll see you can see right there that the wool is kind of pulling away and that probably isn't too bad because the wool sits on top of this wool but this wool is starting to change its shape too and more specifically, I'm worried about right here, you can see ever so slightly it's starting to dent because as it's heating, a lot of the, the air and the heat is venting to this side and it's going to eventually burn a hole right here. To help preserve the metal casing, I'm gonna want a patch right there. Right here, you can see where the rigidizer has let go and it, it kind of flakes off. And, uh, and I don't want to break too much of it off, but you'll see that the exposed wool has sort of been eaten away. And the part that I'm the most concerned about is right here. When this forge is super hot, I can actually see down inside this hole that it's red hot for minutes after everything else has gone back to normal color. 
Um, I, I'm concerned that that's eventually going to burn a hole through to the other side. So my initial plan is going to be to reinforce this entire piece with, with uh, another coating and a nice thick coating of rigidizer and just let it set and let it drip down in and become kind of like a fire brick in these areas that are that are deeper but uh <laughs> kind of looks like metal has 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 melted and then formed to this but this isn't actually metal this is these these bits are just the the burned uh refactory cement now as for the rest here as we look down inside you'll see that my the the fire brick that was given by devil forge has cracked multiple times and has a nice metallic layer to it um i think it is about time for us to peel that out and replace the brick with something else um i'm not exactly sure if I want to tackle that this week or in a future month because when I pull this out I'm gonna take the bottom layer with it but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it past the walls so so I've got a, a few things to worry about on this but uh, I one thing I really want to do is take all that metal at the bottom and melt it down to see what kind of alloy bar I end up with it's gonna be a mix of brass, copper, aluminum, and who knows what else. I don't know how many times I missed the crucible as when I was throwing stuff in, so. But uh, my biggest worries is this wall right here, the hole in the top, and, uh, and possibly melting through the floor. So to help preserve this, like you can see on this side, it's starting to do some damage to the to the wall of the forge and I want to try to preserve this as long as I can you see a lot of heat scorching up here I, I wonder if that's because the wool has sort of shrunk down up here at the top and it might be about time to replace the wool all the way around so um, actually all of you who have forges similar to this I wouldn't mind hearing your perspective as I make the plan to, to go ahead and fix my, my forge. So, I really love having this forge. I want it to last as long as I possibly can. They're not cheap, so I'd rather not go out and buy a new forge or make a new one, so. I, I apologize, this feels like a kind of a sellout video, kind of uh, giving up on the week. I wanted to make sure to post something as to what's going on as well as I'm really excited to announce what I'm working on next with the lost wax molds. I, I plan on making some pretty fun stuff. Um, I'm going to attempt to make a perfect sphere. My son wants a, a copper creeper. He's got this little creeper toy that he wants me to, to cast into, into copper or aluminum. As well as all my other kids have other toys that are lining up to be cast. So. As, as well as I have a few things that I want to make. So I'm excited to get going. I'm probably going to get into a little bit of trouble with this comment, but uh, trouble at home. Um, most things around here get named. Um, my forge has a name. My shed has a name. Uh, this channel has a name. You'll find that a lot of the things that have names were named from my wife because she uh, at first wasn't the biggest fan of this idea. She thought that... Um, burning burning a forge in our backyard and melting down metals at 2000 degrees or so uh was a bad idea and that's how the channel got its name this is bad idea metals similarly um when i come out here to work a lot of times i do so alone um my kids aren't very interested in in watching me tear stuff apart and i don't blame them um also when i'm dealing with dangerous stuff i send them away or at least to a safe distance so my wife has affectionately renamed this shed the Fortress of Solitude. Those of you who don't know what that is, that's Superman's Arctic or Antarctic Fortress, and uh, it's called the Fortress of Solitude. 
So welcome to the Fortress of Solitude. We uh, melt metals in here. I tear apart things in here. And when the acids are here, I will be dissolving metal for gold refinery as well. Although I'm not as much a Superman fan as I am either Batman or Green Lantern, but the Bat Cave didn't really fit, so I didn't call it that. Okay, well I'm done rambling, so thanks for sticking with me and tune in next week and it'll be a lot more fun.